Hey there gang, so this video is going to be centered on one area of clown understanding and improvement that I like to call momentum. Now recently on my stream I've talked a lot about what momentum is and how to improve it, but I still have had a lot of my viewers come to me with concern and confusion as to what exactly it is that momentum, for one thing they don't even, some of them still don't understand it, others they don't really know how to improve it, how to conceptualize it. And so that is going to be the purpose of this video here today. Okay, this video is going to show you guys both through a chart, we're going to explain what this image is here in front of us, and there are also going to be a few clips, I'll run you guys through those clips, that talk about what exactly momentum is in action in that moment of a chase, and how it is that we maintain high momentum so that we can perform better as in, uh, in turn of having low momentum and performing worse, and you know, what exactly that means by comparison, okay? So that is going to be the idea behind this video here today. Now before we get started, the, most, the first thing that does need to be mentioned is that momentum is kind of different from a lot of the other terms I've mentioned in so far within this guide. Um, tile slicing, pallet possession, conceding the pallet. These, uh, these concepts or ideas are things that you are in control of, right? Like you take pallet possession, survivors concede the pallet, you by positioning slice a tile. That's not what momentum is. You don't do momentum, right? That's not what momentum is. Momentum is like a scale, you know? So a good way to really understand that would be kind of like measuring something in miles per hour as per speed. I mean, that is especially when you look at the example that I'm going to be partially illustrating. Just on the surface, that's a good way of understanding it, right? Miles per hour. That's basically what momentum is. It's sort of like a scale, okay? But it's a really big deal when it comes to clown because a big part of where the value in, say, your bottle placement really comes from is from when you place it, where you place it, and how it is that the survivor is initially positioned relative to that bottle and how whether or not they choose to make excuse excuse me whether or not they choose to move in a direction because of where you were moving and the bottle was there's a lot of layers to it right it's not exactly that simple but that is ultimately what makes this area of momentum right this uh th that's what makes it so important is that it's not something you can just put onto paper, right? I can tell you different areas through words, but when you are in your own matches and you are setting up your own yellow and pink combos and you're at a pallet and you're trying to hit a survivor, you know, you may find that it's not working the same way because you are not exactly doing the same thing that I am, right, potentially. There may be a, a difference when it comes to survivor us. Uh, the survivor is farther away from you pre preemptively when you start setting up. You may not be moving exactly like I am. They may not, may not be moving in the exact same way they were in my examples. I'm not trying to belabor or get lost in the details, but is more mentioning them in reference to how momentum is not as easily transcribed, right? So let's exactly talk about how you identify the best that we can how to improve it, okay? If momentum is something that I can't exactly just show you a video and say this is what you do, this is something that you, you know, as I mentioned in the text, I mentioned that you have to actually keep playing clown, you have to keep practicing, and as the more and more you practice, the shorter your chase times get because everything starts to flow better, right? Everything's going to start to flow. You're going to start to know more about just where you place your bottles, but how you're moving, how you're moving. Because I'm sure that's one thing, you know, without going into it immediately just yet that you guys notice, I'm seldom ever not moving. You know, when I'm playing clown and I'm doing something with my bottles, even if I'm in one tile, I am never standing still. You know, I'm constantly moving and shifting. And that's a big part of it, you know. So let's go ahead and kind of talk about momentum and how it is that you can identify different areas that are positive for your momentum and areas that are negative, okay? So first things first, what do we have in front of us, okay? We have a snowball. We have, a, we have a slope, a, uh, a decline, and we have a flat plane, 
okay? The idea behind this illustration is that this is you. This is Clown. Clown is the snowball, all right? Momentum is basically you. You know, I don't have an uh, illustration of a target that isn't exactly as prevalent. What matters for you is where you are going, okay? Because what's really in front of us, right? We're on this, we're on this decline. This is good. This is what you want, by the way. You want to go down because like a snowball, the faster you go, you know, the, if it goes up, you're going to go slower. You're not going to go anywhere at some point potentially, right? You're going to actually go down in the other direction. That's a bad thing, you know? So this is a good thing where we're at right now. So the question is, how do we keep things as close to the same, you know, position as what we've got here? Right, because things aren't always going to be like that. Things are going to change. Something's going to come up. And in a DVD setting, what that actually means is, you know, a survivor is not going to maybe stay at the same pallet. You know, they're not going to stay at the same jungle gym tile. They're going to look to chain the tile. You know, maybe they don't pre-drop. Maybe they do. Maybe they hit you with a pallet stun. All of these different factors are going to influence your momentum. And relative to what I'm trying to demonstrate through the illustration, that is going to impact the this um, the direction of your slope. Okay, that's what you should be looking for here when it comes to understanding how to get higher momentum. So what we've got here, I feel like using three different uh, color gradients are going to be uh, is effective enough at really demonstrating. So like first things first, what this demonstrates the, the the initial the initial slope. This is you. You catch a survivor. You throw either a yellow or a pink. You hit them. They're going like to a tile. They're going to somewhere not very good. This is what it looks like right here, right? That's an example of how this could potentially look. But things can change even at that moment. You know, they're injured. They have made for this. They pallet stun you, right? You set up a yellow and a pink, but you misplace your pink. Uh, they end up actually, somehow your yellow doesn't bloom properly. You know, these are things that are going to give you by comparison to the expected and hopeful outcome of a, of a positive slope, a green slope, as we see here, those things can influence this. Now you have yellow or red. You know, I have had some matches recently at a Torba match where a survivor just didn't drop the pallet. They really played it expertly. So in addition to stalling me for some extra, what was it, 10 to 15 seconds just by not dropping a pallet, they pallet stunned me, chained the tile. You know, these are things that kill your momentum. They completely destroy the the flow that you have at converting pressure because remember that's what clown does clown is a chase killer clown does not control he does not control pressure gens he doesn't do well on large scale maps the whole essence of how he does well is he hunts survivors he downs them quickly he puts so much pressure on that survivor that he's able to pull people is able to pull people to that area. That's what Clown does best. So if you are failing at that one area, the one part that he's supposed to do well in, well then you've got nothing. That's that's basically why Clown does fall apart, especially against coordinated teams, because the moment you do actually get some adversity from a strong survivor, the momentum is so far bad. The momentum against you when it comes to surmounting the pressure generated by the survivors that you crumble there's nothing you can do even someone like me you know that's that's just how clown is designed right so anyways that's that's just one example right that's one example even in a situation where you catch a survivor out early you're going steamrolling you're going down quick you know you make a mistake like that get a pallet stun you lose momentum you know everything's bad for you now you're you're behind because all of this time that your momentum declines all of that time other survivors on the other side of the map they're doing gens you know they don't they don't give a shit what you're doing they have no reason to care because that's clown clown doesn't blink through walls he doesn't teleport to lockers he doesn't teleport to gens doesn't teleport to tvs he's got no means of actually being a threat to anyone else he's not actively engaged with and so that is especially why this negative momentum is going to kill you it's going to completely lose you your games, okay? And that's why understanding and practicing, getting better with your with your bottles, that's where, why it's so important. Because we've talked a lot about the negatives. Let's talk about the positives of high momentum, okay? What happens when you, you chase a survivor, you catch him out quick, right? You get a yellow 
uh, preemptively placed. They, you know, aren't exactly pre-running further too far ahead. You get a pink before the hit. They're injured. Don't cover as much distance. You've got two bottles left with your four bottles set up. You get them to a tile, yellow, pink, pre-drop pallet, go around him either off the 50-50 or before they get back. That's an actual verbatim illustration of many, many chases you will have. And if you do things like that, you get your first hook within 30 seconds, maybe even 40, 45 seconds, especially if you put it near a cluster of gins, you can do crazy off of that. And that's an example example of continued uh, continued decline in you know positive slope right because you catch the body out quick you're steamrolling you're going well you know you, you get them you get the first hit you get them hooked and from that point from that point the survivors now have an objective that they specifically have to play around and that's how you draw their attention right that's how you're able to keep that snowball going they unhook uh, in our case we were running for the uh, force penance recently we could uh, apply the broken you know a lot of survivors in general don't run any tunnel they don't run off the record even post any grab changes so we play around that by tunneling out the person straight off the hook you know these are ways that you just can take your positive momentum this this uh, decline here this green slope and you just keep it going you just keep it going because what you really don't want what you really don't ever want for one thing is this really really negative red incline right the red slope or the yellow even because the thing about compared the yellow to the red is that the yellow slope what this really implies is that you are going you still have the possibility of downing a survivor it's not as if that's off the table because this is what this is. If, if, if literally the concession of momentum is so bad that it's relative to what I'm showing here, you basically need to consider breaking chase. You know, unless that survivor's on death hook and you really need to commit to getting them out the game, like this, this, this level of lost momentum is you break chase. That's how bad it is. And that's something that's practical uh, in plenty of situations you'll find as clown, you know. But going back to just the yellow, this is this is basically like the opportunity to down the survivor with this much lost momentum is still on the table. You're able to go from this this incline back to a decline, right? May not be as strong as what you'd be seeing here, but you're able to get things going again. But it's probably not going to be efficient. You're going to lose a gen or two by comparison to doing it so fast that you're able to preserve those gens or possibly get, take advantage of instant regression. That's the difference of what we're seeing here, and that's kind of why, right? You look at the scale from the uh, from this like little point of origin here. Notice how the the um, the slope is much higher here. You're at a much higher point relative to where you are to the green, because that's basically the influence of momentum on clown's chase. Because uh, again, going back to what I said previously, right? Clown is pure chase. Your chases need to be good. Because you do not have the map pressure. You do not have the mobility to do anything about the other survivors, okay? Now, I believe... Now, there's one There's one other... We'll talk about one more area before I get into the video discussion themselves. Uh, well, well, let's talk about... Let's talk about this. The the neutral slope. Because we talked about the, uh, the, the negatives and the positive. The neutral slope is basically like what's on the table is it can still possibly it's kind of like the yellow it's very very similar to the yellow when it comes to relative momentum uh even though it probably in some ways doesn't really look that way and really what that is is this is more just as time goes on right because that's a good way to think about this i really should have time at the bottom this is more over time. I figured that was kind of apparent to be quite honest, but yeah, you know, over time, the difference between, between yellow momentum by comparison to base does start to add up because if you have, let's say you have just the baseline slope when it comes to your, the state of your momentum, that means that you should still be able to come back from a point where you have an efficient chase. It's not going to be as efficient. You can't capitalize off as much pressure as if you were a lot faster, you performed a lot better, and you got them down quicker like you'd see here. But there's still a lot more on the table than we would, what you would see with the yellow slope, especially compared to a red. But yeah, that's, that's just, this is how I visualize things. This is how I perceive it. I find that it was how I better understood what I needed to be doing and learning clown a lot better because, like I said, I don't ever stand still when I play clown. You know, because, you know, as I mentioned in the text, the way momentum really works with clown 
It's about every bit of your movement. It's about your bottle placement. It's about where, uh, when you place your bottles. It's, it's a lot more, excuse me, it's a lot more nuanced than many people might necessarily recognize at first glance or appreciate, okay? But this is something though, you can't just, you don't learn this quickly. I think I mentioned that a couple times, but I want to, before we go on to the videos, this is important. I do need to make sure I cover this. Even I'm still improving my momentum. You know, this isn't something I've mastered. Momentum, I mentioned, I think as well in the text, this is the glass ceiling. This is literally what you, when you learn what it is that you should be doing with your bottles to, let's say, a 95% understanding. And this is kind of like a very watered down, you could say generalized sense, because it's probably even more nuanced than that, if we're being honest. I mean, let's you know, be real, gang. Even, even then, this is something that you aren't going to have completely mastered. Momentum is something you constantly improve as someone who plays clown because new tiles keep coming out with new maps. New maps themselves keep changing. You have random map generation on tile spawn. Even if you play the same map three times in a row, it's not going to literally be the same way when it comes to how the tiles are generated. And ultimately what that means is that you are going to get better at playing each and every time the more you keep practicing and playing clown. Okay, that's really what I'm trying to drive home at the end, uh, at the end of the day here, okay gang? Now, now that we've kind of explained all of this, I'm going to transition here and I'm going to show you guys just a few chase examples. These aren't going to be like full matches. That's just going to be some really short particular chases where I'm constantly applying what I'm talking about when it comes to the shifting of the movement, the bottle placement when it matters, where you place the bottles, things like that to illustrate through, you know, through video how it is that momentum is, uh, is necessary in order to get, in order to, you know, drive these hits home and win games. Sorry, I stumbled over my words a bit, but yeah, just a sec here, gang. Alrighty, gang. So what I've got in front of us are going to be eight different chase examples that are going to showcase different levels of momentum, starting with a lower mo uh, level of momentum and going much and much higher to where the momentum is going to be really, really ongoing. It's going to be, you know, as far as the graph that I showed you, the green level, very, very downscale. And it's going to be kind of what happens. It'll show you what happens when you're able to improvise when you know what you're doing ahead of what it is that you're in the moment doing. And it kind of, some of them even break down on a step-by-step -step level, like a process as to how, what exactly it is I am doing. I'm talking in the moment. And what we're going to do right now with this is we're going to look at these chases. First things first, I'm gonna have the volume, you know, we're gonna hear them just as they went. And after we listen to each chase as they are, we are going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to mute the sound and we'll be pausing as we go. And I'm going to be talking about momentum. We're going to be specifically focusing on that and how it is that I utilize this concept of momentum and playing to efficient movement, efficient placement in order to ensure that I got these hits that I otherwise would not have gotten if I wasn't as prepared, if I didn't have a better understanding of how it is to maintain this concept of high momentum. Because again, momentum is not something that, it's not like tile slicing, right? It's not something, it, it's not an individual technique. It's not a manner of, of movement. It's a manner of understanding what's going on around you. It's a manner of understanding how to use clown's power in order to turn situations around and have shorter chases, right? That is the whole principle behind momentum. It's about carrying yourself forward, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. Again, we're gonna be looking at the videos vanilla. We're gonna listen to the sound. And again, after that, we're gonna be breaking them down step by step. All right, so first things first. This is a very, very old chase, by the way. This is from probably over two years ago. Um, you know, this is a good example of improvisation. Uh, we'll talk about that, though. First, uh, let's get started. Here's what I want to do. We know Dwight's going over here, so I'm going to do this. <sighs> Come 
Oh, beautiful. Oh! That's how you do it. Oh, we got him. <laughs> oh, that was pretty amusing. All right. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's talk about this. Let's go uh, step by step. So first things first. We're reloading right here. And we are defending a choke point, okay? So right now we have somebody on hook, if you see on the HUD. We intercepted the ace, who, for whatever reason I thought was a Dwight, don't mind me. But we intercepted them coming in for the save. They are right here on this little L checkpoint. And the idea was, was I was going to come in. I was going to try to push him to the right, but I'm going to set up my bottles in a way where no matter what, I'm going to get a hit following the combination. So what I do first is I walk up, right? I walk right up to this L and I throw the yellow. You always, this is something I talk about in the past, your combos almost always will start off with the yellow. If you're trying to figure out what it is that you do, Always know you're almost always going to start with the yellow, okay? Like until you reach the point of galaxy brain, where you're literally putting things together before they even begin, right? That is the only situation in, in a very few level of circumstances where you're going to be pinking before you yellow. You're going to be yellow and before you pink, okay? So get that forward. So that's what I do. I get my yellow out. We put the yellow on the right because we know this is where he's going, right? Do you see how he's going this way? Because that's where our hook is. He's trying to get to the hook. I set up the yellow on the right and I immediately move to the left because I'm trying to push him to this right. So this is what I do. I come here for the pink. And I know that he's either going to go to the right to try to avoid the pink or he's going to just straight up take the pink. And he's going to go to the left. He's going to try to get that unhook. So I come through my yellow, all right? And I push up a bit just in the off chance he is coming here through to the right. But in the event that he is or whether he's not, because remember, I have an extra bottle, I just drop this pink. This pink means that no matter what, he is, he is dead to rights at this tile. He has to make a decision on where he goes. Does he commit in some manner to try to get this unhook right here? Or does he go to the right away from the tile and depend on one of his other teammates to get the save? So what happens is he chooses for the, uh, for the, for the first option. He goes for the left. He goes through my pink. Because remember, we have pinks on both sides. I have the yellow position to where I can pick it up and I can chain. I also have one extra second duration on my yellow. And from that, we catch him right here at almost damn near a dead zone. He's got this one really strong palette right here, but we'll get to that, right? I throw out this yellow, and I actually kind of misplaced it. See, my understanding was I have two bottles left. I was going to get this yellow placed. I was going to possibly, if anything, hit him with a pink right afterwards shortly. Uh, be in the recovery animation, pick up my yellow, come in, maybe do something around the hook. That was kind of what I initially had in mind, but instead... What happens is I throw this yellow, he takes this really weird movement that kind of really displaces and puts him a lot more closer toward me, because again, I'm still buffed by my own yellow from previously. And this tells me that even if I don't pick up this yellow, I don't need another bottle to get the hit. I still have one bottle, so I go for a vanilla lunge, I hit him. And I know that he's likely going to be going for that unhook. However, in the event that he is, regardless... Rather than chase him from the right, I have an active yellow. I figure I can just come from the left, get especially with my extra speed, and it might be just as efficient, especially if I go around. But here's the thing. Let's go back a second here. It's about right here, when I'm going toward this yellow, where I hear the pallet drops. This is a big thing. Always listen to your audio. We hear the pallet will drop if you go back. I'll actually, hold on. We're going to put the sound on for this, too. I want you all to really, really pay attention when this happens. Well, that's an ace. Listen, listen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right there, right there. So notice, we don't even see anything. We have no fucking idea where Ace actually is when it comes to visuals, right? We're coming through our yellow, like I said, with the uh, with the prince, uh, the idea in mind of taking through this yellow, going toward that hook, see if we can intercept to some degree, rather than just coming around from the right with his own initial speed boost, not having any benefit from our misplaced bottle. That was what we had initially in mind, because we're thinking ahead, we're thinking on our feet, and we're improvising, like I said, off of my own mistake because I did make a mistake there. I threw a yellow too early. We gained no benefit from the yellow on the initial injury. And I was trying to see if I could still capitalize off of the value from that bottle in order to convert it into something else. And that's what happened. Once we get that audio cue, once we hear that that pallet has dropped, that tells me definitively 
This is literally where he is. I don't have to see him. Because unless his teammate sprouted fucking wings and flew over to drop the pallet, that's Ace. That's the Ace we just injured. So we hear he drops his pallet. We come around from the left because I don't know what side, though, he did drop it on. I still have my full benefit of speed. I see he dropped it on the other side because he's not here. Actually, no, he just slid over, okay? So we come around from the right. Remember, I'm invigorated. I still have one bottle. So I use my pink because I know where the hell else is he going to go. He just threw down this pallet. It would be very unlikely, very very interesting to, to, to a reasonable degree if he just, for whatever reason, came around here, went this way. Because I'm not sure. I can't remember if there was a pallet here or not. Can we even see from this angle? We come around through here. You can't even really see. There may or not be a pallet here. It may be on the other side, but, but that's the thing, gang. It, it's very likely he was going to come around through here, play this, especially due to the pre-distance. You know, a lot of survivors are not exactly aware of how fast you move when you have these yellow bottles. And so we're coming around with their yellow, and I throw this pink. I realize if he is playing this tile, we throw this pink. See, look at this. It's already placed early before he even gets there. He's intoxicated right now. This is literally where the slowdown happens. Our speed is now expiring, but we have the slowdown. And when we lunge from right here, because we wanted to make sure we really had it, especially, we were slightly concerned about Dead Hard, let's be honest, gang. Um, we end up just barely hitting him as he slides over the tile. So if we had not played around that yellow, our momentum would have been a lot worse if he did go to that pallet because we would have came from the right, he would have dropped it on the other side, we would have had no yellow, we would have had one bottle, and it would have been very hard to play that pallet with only one bottle, even with extra invigoration duration, we use the yellow, that would be extremely difficult. Um, you know, he has all different ways of abandoning the tile, even from the corner, especially if we were on that other side. So that was really, really smart of us playing around that audio cue and doing that. And we were specifically only able to accomplish that because of that yellow. That yellow gave us, gave us that speed right when we needed it. Because look, we're going to go back right here. We throw this yellow right here. Look at where it is, how close it is to the setup of the loop. That's a big fucking deal. We get this hit, and you look at exactly where it is. It's so close to the pallet. He drops this pallet. We are able to come here, see him, and that extra second, uh, that allows us to uh, not worry so much about coming around to identify what side it is that he's on. And that was just enough time with the pink to get him right as he gets to the pallet. That's really, really important, okay? So, next example, all right? Let's see. The volume back on here. That's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to do. Yes, it is. There we go. Yes, please run to the pallet. See, they probably see that pallet down, y'all. They're like, oh, salvation. The pallet is already dropped. I'm free. Yes, please drop that one too and see what the fuck happens. Where are you going? Dead art for me. Nope. Nope, gang. Nopers. Uh-uh. Close that book. Alright, you have to forgive me all for being a little bit extra. Sometimes I'm a little bit under a different stage of influence during some of these clips. <laughs> but let's go back to the beginning with this one. This is a very, very good example of momentum that I really enjoy. So first things first, uh, all right, so right at the end of this one, we're going to go right back here. All right, so right here, first we've got her in a similar tile that I was just talking about previously. She's coming around from the right. She's got a pre-drop pallet. We see the pre-drop pallet right here. She's coming around, and rather than chase her directly, because I know this is kind of the stage of influence, this is kind of how I'm slicing the tile here. I'm sli we know she wants to go this way. How do I slice it? The opposite way. I slice it the opposite way. So rather than chase her directly, I put a yellow right here, and I come around. Because she's coming this way, right? Rather than chase her directly, we're going to slice her inward onto this side, this side right here. We throw down our yellow, and as she rotates in the opposite direction again, we throw our pink. Because what is she going to do now? She's going to do the exact same thing. 
but just from the opposite direction until she sees us again. But this time, we have our yellow, and now she's going to run through our pink. We hit her right here. Now notice, what does she do right after we hit her? She does not take this palette. Why? This is somewhat of an old clip, and the reason why is because she is, this was back when you had more distance just from speed when you get hit. She was running forward. The time it takes to vault the palette is a significant loss of distance and speed. That is actually something you play around too, by the way. And instead, she was going to get further, uh, go farther from just holding W. So that's that was smart what she did. And look at her go. She's going straight through that temple, going right through that temple. And we know that she's going to try to get out of this temple. She's not staying. She's going outside. So I throw this yellow. Look where this yellow is placed. This yellow is placed right at the center of the steps. If she goes forward, we can chase her forward. If she goes left, we can chase her left. If she goes right, we can chase her right. It's not active yet. She's not going to get the benefit. We're going to get the benefit. That's everything about what this bottle when it comes to its placement. So we get the benefit, go right, because she's going right. I already have my pink because I've got five seconds of speed. I know there's a palette right here. Look where this pink is placed. It shuts her off on this side. She immediately reflexively goes to the palette because she knows if she goes through that pink with me and my speed, she is not making it to a different palette. And what do we do? We're not, y'all, we're not stopping. This is a big part of what I talk about. Momentum is about when you, especially the high level momentum, you don't stop moving. You keep moving. You are going in some direction. If you're not going to the right, you're going to the fucking left, or you're going forward. You're doing something. You're not standing still. The only time where standing still could potentially be value when it comes to your momentum is when you have a survivor specifically locked at a tile, and you have been maintaining such a high level of momentum that I've been talking about that you are trying to just rattle them. You are literally just not trying to trip them. You stop. This is usually when I'm reloading. Sometimes I'll, I'll do this when I'm reloading. I'll be moving very high the whole match, and I'm in a very good position. I'll get them to a corner tile, and I just stop. I'll just stop, and that just throws them off their fucking feet because right after I stop, I go back to moving high crazy again. It's something a lot of survivors, especially not at the super high and are prepared for, but it's everything I'm talking about when it comes to the principle of momentum you need to be on your feet and you don't need to be standing still i think that's something a lot of uh, excuse me a lot of newer clowns struggle with and i understand you know this is again this is something i'm still improving on you know momentum is what i again like to call the glass ceiling of clown it's something you constantly keep pushing through and there are layers and layers of glass ceiling when it comes to momentum because you should be constantly improving just as i do almost every other match over and over in time, different ways to get more efficient and faster chases, okay? But that's in essence, like I said, the principle of momentum. Let's go back to uh, this individual chase. So we have our yellow set. Let's go back again. We're chasing her over here just to make sure we're all on the same page again. We get this yellow. We see that she's going right. We play off of the right and we can go any direction. And we know she's going to have to take this palette because we have the pink that forces her to do that without stopping movement. We set up our yellow on the outside so she can't get benefit. She plays the palette, trying to get some type of palette stun something because she's got nothing. But that's the thing. Once she drops that palette, she loses all manner of palette possession. This is something, this is why I talk about palette possession in the guide, gang. Once that palette goes down, look at this. She has no pallet possession. She has to play around 50-50 over the pallet vault, or she has to commit to going around the outside. But again, we've got that pink. We pre-placed that pink before she even got to the pallet. Okay? We're still sped up. That pink's already placed, and we've got a yellow. We're using our yellow timer, but we're about to get it back. She loses pallet possession. We drop another pink because this does, well, this does one thing. Now she can't abandon to go to that tile. Do you see how she has that tile on the back? She can't go there because we pre-dropped that pink. So what does she do? She commits to the tile. She even dead hearts because she has it, but it doesn't fucking matter because we're sped up by her yellow. She's slowed down by my pink. She even with dead hearts, she's not making it back to that pallet, gang. And again, that was pre-nerf dead hard. 
all right? But this is all momentum. This is all the principle of momentum. This is something you only get better at over time because, again, we're talking about the exact same placements. They're just being done very much faster, and they're being done more accurately with much better precision. Okay. Next chase. Let's see. All righty. This one's actually really fucking funny. You guys are going to like this. Do you slice yourself inward? <laughs> Probably. That hard? No? Ooh, works for me. I'm going to cut your ass off over here, though. I'm not letting you get to that fucking window. You think I give a shit about that fucking pallet? You got to hit him with the 360 double back because you know they're greedy, and then hit him with the mm, and then you come back around this way, come mm. And then you got to come back this way, too, right? Mm, mm, mm. And then you do them with, like, the mm, and they don't make it to the fucking window, gang. It's all 3-4 at the door. And that's how you do it, gang. Mm. You'll see it. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, gang. Holy shit. Yeah, like I said, it, it might be a little... Uh, <laughs> like I said earlier, sometimes I could be a little bit extra. Uh, Alright, where are we at right here? We down to right here. I gotta make sure I get us right back to the beginning. <laughs> Alright, so... This... I probably could have put this one more later toward the end, because this is extremely high momentum. This is... The, the whole, everything that transpired in this specific clip was me just going off the rails. I, I, I had her down to a, to a dial, gang. I knew everything she was going to do. I could very clearly tell that this person did not have the level of experience to play around what I was doing. And... Oh man, it was it was hilarious. So let's let's exactly talk about what happened because I know I know some of it may have seemed very unorthodox. I know there was a lot of spinning and, and a lot of people might be wondering why on earth are you spinning so much? Let let's talk about that. First things first, gang. We have one bottle in the chamber, okay? We just threw a pink. We technically had two. We're running two extra bottles. We throw a bing. Uh, oh, excuse me. We're down to zero bottles. That was our last one. So we throw a pink. They're slowed. The idea behind this was I could potentially get them. The reason why I didn't initially lunch, and I think you can actually see it. Do you notice how her arm kind of turns like this? I was afraid of dead hard, and it looks like she had it. Now, no, you're going to notice I pull out. For that reason, because I was concerned of that, I'm trying to avoid that stun, gang. Stuns will kill you. They will destroy you as clown. Because if I eat that stun, she makes it to that window, okay? That's what I'm ultimately playing around. I do not want her getting to that window. I'm making sure that I'm able to get around in this manner. Because if I don't eat that stun, I can slice this tile, keep her from that window, Okay, so I come around here and look at this. Do you see how she's right here? You can barely just see her. That's what she's trying to do. She's trying to get to that window. But again, we didn't eat that stun. And we're coming back around here. This pallet's still up too. She never dropped it, which means one thing. Pallet possession is still on the table. That's something we have to keep in mind. So we come over here. Again, I'm out of bottle. So what do I do? I reload. I'm watching that doorway, and I'm also watching this side of the, of the loop because I want to make sure two things. I don't want her getting to that window. I don't want her abandoning this tile and going out that classroom door. We reload. She, for whatever reason, she drops that pallet. And again, what happens every time a survivor does that? Pallet possession is off the table. That's a good thing. If you're able to play around pallets like this, then... When a survivor gives up pallet possession, the threat is no longer there. The idea of it, whether or not they directly give you the pallet possession, which, by the way, isn't necessarily as possible here, because if we were to take pallet possession, it mostly will be giving avenue for her to just take the window vault. But once the, pal the pallet itself is actually dropped, the threat of the stun is no longer an option, and that is mostly always the best thing about a pre-drop pallet. You can really, really take advantage of that. Usually, sometimes the chases are always slightly harder once the pallet is pre-dropped, but you never have to worry about the threat of a stun. The concept of pallet possession is a lot less prevalent, okay? So she drops that, and we just finish our reload. I make sure just last second she's not coming around there, and so what do I do from here? This is where I start getting fucking crazy, because she's injured. I know she's injured. I was pretty sure she did just dead hard to some degree. I wasn't really playing around dead hard fully, 100%. But what do I do? I come around, I swap to my yellow, I throw it on the right. She's not getting that yellow, gang. 
All right, so I rotate 360 as I come around to the pallet because she is looking at me this whole time. And what does she see? She knows, because this whole time you have to understand, do y'all see the HUD? You got one person DC, you got two people slug. She's respecting me at this point. She doesn't think at this point that I'm bad at the game. She has to understand, she, she understands at this point that if she gives me an inch, I'm going to fucking take a mile. I'm going to go far with it. And so what happens is when she sees me put that yellow in and she's spinning, she's probably getting nervous, gang. Because the closest we've done to slowing down is when we had to reload. We've been on her the whole time. We just pinked her. We came in. We avoided the dead heart and the pallet stun. We were able to keep her from the window, push her at the tile. All of this done in a few seconds, gang. This is the essence of momentum. So we come around with the yellow. We do a spin. And what do I do at this point now that I've kept her? Because the reason why I came this way, I don't want her taking that door. So we come back. The yellow's about ready. I 360 spin just in the event she's still somehow looking at me because I'm trying to keep her on her toes. The more I spin, if I do it properly, the less she is going to know what the hell it is that I'm doing. All she sees are bottles and me spinning. And all she knows is that she can only get out through that door or over that, over that window. <laughs> you know, she's likely not going to be able to get out through the pallet. You know what I mean? And she sees that I'm not kicking that pallet, you know? So, so that's, that's what's going on right now. Okay. So we come through here, we get our yellow, we throw the pink. This pink locks her down from the right side. She, we don't have to worry as much about her going through from the right side because we have that pink. And if anything, the inclination, the perception of seeing that pink on the right probably going to push her to the left. It's what it does to a lot of survivors reflexively when the momentum is especially high. They want to stay away from your pinks when they know that you're utilizing the yellows. So we throw the pink, we 360 spin, we come back and look, do you see where she is right now? We can even go back just a few seconds again. We throw the yellow, 360 spin, double back, 360 back into the yellow, throw the pink, we 360 again, just in the chance. She is trying to get out through this doorway, gang. She wants to get out through the doorway. But because we came back and she sees us coming back, and she probably saw a spinning gang too. She is on her, she is nervous as fuck. She, she really doesn't know what to do. And what do we do after we come back refreshing our yellow? We come around this way. I throw another yellow. It starts spinning again. Like, gang, she, here's the thing. Look, the yellow is still active. I come through and it almost is like I have the potential to refresh and maybe she's playing off that expectation. So when she comes again, do you see her coming to the right? She wants to maybe think about taking that door. She sees the yellow placement. But what do we do? By some weird ass, I don't understand how I do it. By some miracle. I hit her directly with the pink. We refresh our yellow from that one previous placement, the second placement here, gang. Again, go back here, 360, double back. Pink, 360, throw the yellow, double back. We came in, pink, 360, we got a refresh, okay? That's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. We get our refresh, the pink slowed her down off that refresh. And look, gang, is she tried to go off of that, she very likely would have to medium vault due to the pink hindrance and or due to our speed, we would have been able to lunge and hit her over the window. So that's the thing. This is why right here, if you notice, GDCs. <laughs> she, she didn't want to take it, gang. That, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That is high momentum, extremely high momentum. You know, spinning can sometimes work against you. I'm going to put that on the table and just make it very clear. Sometimes spinning can be harmful. It's a lot more valuable when you are playing on maps that have, uh, excuse me, maps where you can keep survivors at a tile, okay? So that that's just something to think about now. But um, let's see. Let's move on to the next chase example here. <laughs> Gosh, I'm so extra sometimes, gang, I'm going to be honest with you. All right, let's see. Like this. We fucked Meg, haven't we? Yeah, we did get Meg. So we're going to go for Meg, because she's just as much pressure as uh, Rebecca would be. She's really got this fucking shit here, dude. Yeah, get fucking rolled. Come on, hit me with your stupid ass dead arm, holy shit. 
I get look look. Like I said, I may be in a different state during some of these clips, and I'm very, I was, y'all, dead hard. Right now, I'm especially made for this. I'll, I'll even put that on the table. It's got me extremely jaded, gang. All right, so, like, and that's how you do it, gang. hold on. So, like, let me, let me get us right back to the beginning there. So, yeah, like, the, <laughs> all right, so let's talk about this clip. This is, this is another very, very, very good example of high momentum. So to start things off, we've got her cut off, right? We've got her just out in the open. We have a pre-placed yellow, okay? It just got placed. We hit her. We have three bottles in the chamber. So she starts running. Where does she go? She goes this way. We don't have to worry about her, her going through a yellow then. She's going all this way. We see her with, her, uh, with our cigar box. So here we go. She's going to Crane. I'm prepping my pink. Why don't I throw the pink yet? Why don't I throw the pink yet? Because of travel time, gang. If I threw this pink right now, the travel time, especially with shit like right here, this little like pole, the locker here, she might not get hit by the pink. That's going to put me at two. I'm going to be down. So instead I pull back. I pull it out again because I know we're coming around here and I've got just enough time. I quickly throw it. I hit her directly. Hitting her directly is not as much of a big deal as actually slowing her down at this pallet because it's going to be slowing her down at the pallet and it's going to be slowing her down following the pallet. So we get the pink. We come around. What do we notice? She's pre-dropping. This is a big. Do you notice how I noticed? Look at this. I'm expecting her to do this. I'm expecting her to pre-drop following this. So I'm already swapping, gang. I already have my yellow. I flick swap because she's going to be stuck in animation. And she is, you know, she's not going to play this. She, we know she's going to move. I'm playing off that expectation. So we throw the yellow. Where does she go? I can do two things with this yellow, gang. If she's going to this, to this palette, look at where it blooms. I can just come up here, get the yellow, go right. Or if she's doing what I think she is and she's playing that, I can take the yellow, go up the stairs, look, I'm throwing another pink, and she takes the window. I know if I go just up just a little bit with how panicked she is, because again, we're, we're constantly moving. We're not stopping. We're not slowing down. She's going to take that window. She's going to jump out the crane. I threw that second pink. She slowed. She can't really move. Look at all the dense pink, gang. She can't go anywhere. That's a hit. Why did I lunge again? You know, as you heard me say, I was concerned about the dead hard. We down her. That's good to go. Okay, gang. So that's that's what it's about. You know, we didn't stop moving. And again, really, really important bottle placements, okay? This is really, really important. We get the pink. Look at this yellow. You know, this is something we, we were not, we didn't slow down here, gang. All of this is one conscious, like, conscious stream of movement. Look at this pink. Drop the yellow. We're still moving. We haven't stopped. We're coming through. Drop the pink. Come over, she vaults, nothing, nothing. And we're able to hit her now before she vaults the pallet, okay? Next chase example. <laughs> All right, here we go. Remember, I'm trying to hold by stacks. I think the yellow did expire in time, by the way. She has kill shack, keep in mind. We're gonna have to throw a pink all the way through. Remember, we have coups. She can't make this. She doesn't make this. There we go. Alrighty, so this is a this is a momentum clip with coup de gras, but it's I felt like it was a very damn good example, and it really really showcases. Hold on, just a sec. It really really showcases exactly how coup de gras is able to just upscale your lethality and enable you to do some such crazy hits that are beyond what would otherwise be possible without it so first things first again i've this is before the patch and i've always played very conservative with my stacks like before then i would just seldom ever use it unless i really really needed just to get the down so here we are we've got three stacks we save our stacks we just get the hit i have two bottles gang and she, she on just on just reaction, she's just panicked. She accidentally runs through my pink, probably because she wanted to go to the pallet gang. She's sped up. She's moving fast as hell, turns her camera, runs through that pink on accident when trying to get to the pallet. And so she's slowed down here as we recover. We're coming to this pallet. And I know when I say we have, she has kill shack, keep in mind, I'm talking about that pallet is still up. I know the pallet is there. That's why we have her yellow bottle. The yellow is meant to place on the outside of the shack. We figure it's extremely fucking likely that she is going to drop that pallet. Because what happens if she doesn't drop that pallet? Do you see this pink? 
if she didn't drop that pallet, she tried to play a window, she tried to go out, that pink is going to destroy her. She is not going anywhere, okay? So she does drop, which is smart. And what do we have right here? She's going this way. Notice how she's going this way. We throw our yellow. She's about to pre-drop. She pre-drops. Notice as we throw this pink. Do you see, see how she's still going forward? Right as she's doing that, she sees the pink go over. She changes direction. Now she wants to go window. But here's the thing, gang. I'm playing around that with the palette kick. We have coup. This is the only reason this works is because A, you're going to see her connect with the pink, and B, with the palette both being gone and us having coup, she has no real recourse in order to actually avoid getting hit. She can't run to the palette and make it from there. She can't go to another tile uh, going out from the right or the going back from the back, and she can't play the window because of the yellow plus the pink and the coup. Because look, we've got full duration. The yellow, like I said, placed on the outside of the shack, right in front of the palette, means that we are starting this circle with full yellow duration. We come through here. Okay, she had to medium vault that window too, I believe. Did she not? We kick this. What do we see? That is a medium vault, gang, so that's even slower. She comes around with the medium vault, comes around through here. She goes through the pink, and she's hugging it tight. It's just slightly deceptive cloud placement but that was a very very just perfectly placed pink with respect to getting her with how close she was hugging so she's intoxicated here you can even see it through the score event and she's trying to get to this window but look at how far away we are we've already started to lunge look at how far away we come in very far she's even not even intoxicated gang look at this that's a fast fall that means that the intoxication that she got right at this doorway look at this is already expired by the time that she's actually there. So through the yellow, look, it's still going. We don't have a garish makeup kit. That's just base kit yellow placement, which really, really goes back to what I'm talking about here, gang. Let's play this from the beginning. Look at this yellow placement. How it's right on the outside, right when she pre-drops. We kick it. Because we were just barely able to start with full duration coming around here and with the pink, because the pink expired before she got to the window, that is why, because look, right as it finished, it expires. That is the only reason we caught up to her in time. That is very, very high momentum in action. That is everything in essence to what I'm talking about. Because this whole time, we did not stop moving. Okay, We're walking forward, pre-place the yellow. We come in to kick after throwing the pink. We come around, we're going. We're not stopping. She's through the pink that we placed such a long time ago. We didn't wait to place that pink. We placed that pink very early. Okay? That's literally everything I'm talking about. Everything's on a roll. It's on a coaster. Okay? We get this down right here. We're going to go on to the next example. Excuse me. This one's actually an old clip. This is pre-Dead pre, pre Hard Change days. But this is honestly one of my favorite chases ever um in dvd I, I i love this chase with this with this one david he he was honestly freaking crazy and what y'all are going to really really see here is a lot of what i talked about with palette possession and you're going to really really see what i'm talking about when it comes to making sure you don't slow down and the significance and the importance of staying on your toes keeping high movement okay we got we got to start with the following my apologies here dad Alrighty. Having cigar box, what that means is that I take a lot of inefficient movement. Wow, dude. He's actually really good, okay. This this Jeff is actually freaking wild. This, I, I respect this Jeff out the fucking ass. Don't do that. Dead hard for me. I know you got it. All right. So this chase, the whole first half gang, that is pallet possession. It almost damn near one of the highest levels here, gang. Uh, gang. So let's pull back a bit. All right. This is right at the end of that. 
this clip right here. All right, so we're coming around here, gang. We're coming. I love this palette, by the way. On Lyrius, this is literally one of my favorite palettes. Um, it's very, very mind gameable. Very, very uh, possible to play even pre-dropped with smart bo uh, bottle placement. You know, y'all see us here. We've we got. Sticky soda and chloroform, not exactly very uh, strong add-ons, nor do they really influence potency whatsoever. You know, we don't have extra duration to invigoration. We don't have extra slowdown from flask. We don't have extra duration slowdown from ether. There is literally nothing, not even something like Cigar Box for the Utility, which is, you know, I mean, that's utility versus potency. We've got literally nothing that is special in any way to help us play this any better. But, you know, we're still able to do very well here because, you know, we maintain high momentum and we understand how exactly to use our bottles and keep moving on our feet. Because, again, look what happens here. He's, you see where he is right now? He is right on that pallet. He is playing the possession of the pallet with a little bit more daring. You know, he's not directly on it, but he's open enough knowing because obviously he's going to be able to get to a close enough range at any real moment because see look right here he's already on top of it right he, he knows he's safe he extends a little bit but he's playing the pallet possession so what do i do here with this first yellow i set it on the outside because what i'm doing is i'm creating a box i am tile slicing his ass in on this on this little uh, on this desk here do you see this desk that is the ex uh, the end of the box do you see this little these pews that is basically the extent of the box and the yellow is going to allow me to pivot as long as I keep moving, I keep the momentum going, I can pivot through my yellow, and I can just keep playing it from either side. But we are mostly at this point, now that we've got the yellow in place, we want to do something about that palette. So look, he's giving up the possession, but here's the problem, right? He's giving up the possession, but look at our yellow. It's coming up. He's not willing to drop the palette. Because he knows that based on the pre-distance, if he just keeps going and he especially goes in, he's going to make it to my yellow. That's why he doesn't drop the pallet. And I wasn't entirely expecting that. I'm, I'm kind of in what you could call semi-autopilot mode. That's why you see this pink come out here. Because with the expectation that he drops his pallet, if I pre-place that pink on that side, we've got the setup. That's, that's the snake gang. That's the curve. We come back around. We pick up the yellow. We push him through the pink. And we play the 50-50 around the desk with the pre-drop pallet. And that's a wrap. You know what I mean, gang? So that's what we were really trying to go. But he look, he doesn't drop that pallet. So we, we're not, we're never stopping the movement. We come through, we pick up the yellow, and more importantly, not do we just get the yellow, we stopped him from getting the yellow. That's a big deal, because that means we can push him this way. And notice how he's coming back around through here. He's trying to uh, get away, but we come in through here. We are able to slow him down. You know... On hindsight, it slightly looks like he's moving as if he were, he was able to get it. But regardless, we are able to, by going through it ourselves, we're able to keep him from leaving this tile. And we are able to keep our pinks to lock him down at this, uh, at this pallet. And notice for the longest time, he's not dropping it, gang. This is a big deal. This is why I talk about pallet possession and the importance of it. Because we're trying to avoid this stun if we commit in any unorthodox way and we don't place our bottles in the way that we do, we're likely not going to hit him before he gets back to the pallet. That's just the bottom line. Battery's just going to chain the town, gang. So we come in through here. We, uh, we place our pink, right? He's going through. He doesn't drop it. And this is what I realized because this whole time, gang, as I come up to him from right here, Literally, as I'm coming up to this David, and I throw this yellow, I'm in the process mode. I'm constantly engaging myself with trying to figure out how do I play around this pallet possession? How do I stop him from hitting me with the stun? How am I going to hit him and keep him at this tile? That's what I'm doing this whole time. I get my yellow. I come through. He doesn't drop the pallet yet. I see that. I throw the pink on the off chance on the off chance that if he doesn't drop this and he goes through, I can catch him, but I notice that he's um, don't have the speed for that. Plus, he now is sitting at the pallet. So once I see he's still sitting at the pallet, I place another yellow, I come through, he leaves the pallet again. He doesn't drop it. He knows that I'm trying to play around that. He comes around because he knows I threw another yellow, but here's the thing, gang. This whole time as I'm in process mode with this second yellow, Rather than place my pink on the right side, I place it in front on the left because I see every time as I'm coming through, I'm, in, I'm processing how it is that he's playing this tile. I know he's not going to drop it likely if I do this. So when I throw this pink, when I throw this pink, we're able to catch him with because of the pink. 
before he gets to the yellow. We get the injury. From this point, he either, and we see him going to the right, he either goes right out there and he probably, you know, maybe for whatever reason he chose not to, we could have chased out because of that, because again, we have our yellow. Or we could have gone from the back if he went from the back. Okay, but this, this yellow and that pink is a big deal because again, he doesn't drop the pallet. That means that pallet possession wasn't really a problem. Everything, you know, we kept our momentum high enough to where we could catch him out. Because again, I think the reason why I didn't want to drop it, and this is really important, once that pallet is down, that pallet's not coming up again, gang. You know, unless he's going to do something crazy like try to fuck in any means necessary in my face, he's not going to have the resource of the pallet stun and pallet possession against me once he drops that pallet. And that's, you know, having the pre-distance and the way that he played it in his favor, that's why he didn't drop it so long. And it's why being able to play around that as clown is very, very important. You know, if you don't have good momentum, if your understanding of the tiles is not proficient, and you come against a chase like this, you're probably going to struggle because you're not going to have the momentum to react to what people like this are doing. Because again, we're coming around two to three different times, different angles at the same table. And it's not until I realize midway through, if we do this and he doesn't drop, we get the hit. We get the hit. So we get the hit. What happens next? He comes back around to the tile and look right here, gang. Look, See where he is right there? We're getting ready. He tries to come out from the left until we cut him from the left. And he knows now, because he committed to this tile, he needs to do something different. He clearly needs to do something different because he just tried to play it this whole time without dropping that pallet, and he didn't get anything for it. He got punished for it. So we haven't even done anything yet. Look, look, look. Watch the pallet. We throw the yellow. That pallet's now down. He knows he needs to do something different. He tried to play it without dropping the pallet. He still got hit. Now he's going to try playing it by pre-dropping the pallet. Because what happens if I don't play this pallet and I kick it? He's able to leave the top. That's what he's banking on. He is praying and hoping I need to kick this pallet. He is, he, that, that is, he is crossing his fingers right now that I am not able to do something here and I need to kick this fucking pallet. Because if, I am, if that is not the case, even with dead hard, he, he is foobard. He is, he is dead to rights. Okay? So we get the yellow set up. We come around here. And what was it that I was talking about at the beginning of this chase? See this pink? Let's go back. This is really, really important. Because again, I was talking about this from the very beginning. From the very beginning, I was preparing for this. And he didn't do it initially. The pink right there. That's the exact same thing I did right at the beginning. So we get the hit. We reload. He pre-drops that pallet right as we set up the yellow. And now that I literally see this pallet is dropped in my face, I throw the pink. He flashlights. That's good. That tells me really, really good things. Because what that tells me is because how survivor movement speed slows down, he's lost a lot of speed distance in the process of trying to go for a blind. But why would he do that, gang? Could anyone guess? He was doing that simply because he was trying to uh, blind me if I was kicking the pallet. He thought maybe I was going to kick that pallet, gang. Because what was I just saying? He is crossing his fingers right now, gang. He wants me to kick that pallet because if I'm able to play this pallet, he's likely not able to do anything now. He's injured. You know, dead heart aside, he sees what I can do. He's, he's nervous as hell right now. We have not stopped moving. The closest we've done to slow down our movement was we had to reload. You know, we, once we got our five bottles after I placed that yellow, y'all saw it. We went left, right, left, right, and then we went yellow, pink, one side on the other. Pallet doesn't get dropped. We get the hit. Now he knows... Like like I said, he has to do something different. So he drops the pallet. We've got the yellow down. And we do, like I said, I was meaning to do from the very beginning. I get that pink. Let me go right back here. I get the pink. He pre-drops. I throw that pink. He messes up on the blind. And because we have that pink now on the other side, and I've got my yellow, I've got the setup. I've got the yellow speed. I've got the pink slowly come around. But, you know, I do realize something, gang. Remember, he does have dead heart. I realize that he still has dead heart. And in order to make sure that I don't end up missing him as a result of that dead heart, I come back. But since I still have extra bottles, I put a pink. This way we keep the duration on going. And here's another thing too. He could have vaulted the pallet, but because of the yellow, I could have 50 50 I was partially playing around that. But another thing I banked on too is he was aware of that, and he wasn't going to try to go for that since he's still a dead heart. And so he comes around, but way too much pinking. He's got so much pink in his way. He tries to dead heart because he's literally got nothing at this point, and that's how we get the down game. That's that's really that, that's what it boils down to, you know. And that that is that is everything what I'm talking about 
when it comes to high momentum. Because we're going to play it back the whole time, just again from the very beginning, as I just kind of summarize. If I moved slower, if my movement wasn't so constant, if it wasn't so ongoing, if I didn't respect the knowledge of everything I knew and what I talked about previously at the very beginning of the uh, terms about pallet possession, I would have not been able to pull off this hit right here. Or any of these two hits, one of the two, because he would have. I would have either had to kick this pallet, I would have eaten the stun, and he would have chained while still healthy, or I just would have missed because of the dead heart, and he would have chained as a result of that. Okay, so that's that's really just something to keep in mind because we were able to hit him here by understanding how he plays the possession. We were able to come around and uh, by playing off the high momentum, knowing we didn't have close enough distance, we were able to set up an extra pink loop round from the side while also playing around the possibility of, like I said, a 50-50 over the pallet. Okay. We get the down here. Next case. All right. Fine. This one works too. Set up from this angle. Come this way. Come out. Ooh, she's actually smart. Actually, was a little bit behind, but that's fine. This one's also good. One of the reasons we specifically came from that angle is because the only other way she could go is to go into this classroom, which also works for us too. Go around like this. Come like this. Come walk inside. Pretend the pallet kick. We forgot to swap bottles because I'm bad at the game. It still works out. Throw a yellow this way. She can't make it in time because we specifically calculated it that way. All she's got is this shit right here, and unless she's got dead heart, she somehow goes down. And that's the wrap. All right, so the funny thing about this chase, <clears throat> I did almost everything right here from the beginning to the end, except there was, you can really tell, I'm sure, if you know, you've probably watched me play enough as of recently, there were some very, very key mistakes, very slight ones that were significant enough to just not give me the momentum that I needed in order to get the hits in it either tile, right? So let's let's go back from the beginning. First things first, this this pallet is 100% playable. This pallet is not the problem, okay? We, our yellow placement on point, because again, we're trying to push them this way because we don't want them going this way. If we push them to the right, they have the possibility of going out through the, uh, through the main door. Pushing them to the left will also push them to a vulnerable tile. That's what we're trying to do here. So we get the yellow, I fake a kick, and I throw a pink because we're coming out through our yellow, gang. We know our yellow is going to be active. I figured we'd be close enough to get the pink, but here's the thing, gang. I miscalculated, and what I really didn't want to do here, even though it may have probably still worked, is I didn't want to fully commit to going this way, possibly not catch her before she gets to the yellow, and she gets the yellow, and she either, you know, I hit her, and she's able to go, you know, straight out the other classroom with the speed boost. I just wanted to keep her at tiles I knew were going to be more likely and vulnerable for me to hit her. So instead, I try to come from the right, and I was hoping... I was hoping by doing this, she would, you know, go to the left, but instead she pushes out, and I'm like, okay, this is fine. You know, we we can just lock her right here and reload. You're going to see me spin here in just a sec. I reload, to get my bottles, I spin because I'm, I just randomly do this because I'm still somewhat moving. I'm trying to keep her on her toes. We switch to a yellow, I throw it, and I spin. I come around this way. I want to, again, I'm trying to, I'm putting something in front of her. Sometimes with my yellow placements, gang, I'm placing them with the idea that I want my survivors themselves to think that they can go for them. Because think about this game. Look at this yellow placement. On the off chance that Hattie gets this yellow, she takes that yellow, she goes out through that room, she keeps going, she can take that main doorway, she can hold left like you're going to later see her do on in the clip. She, she's, she's golden, you know? So I'm putting something on the table for her. It's an enticement. It's like you could say a mouse trap, even. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's, like, it's like some cheese... Uh, you know, some poison cheese, right? So we put the yellow there. I come and fake the kick because we know she's on this side, gang. We know she's on this side. Yellow right here. Hell, if I'm throw, if I'm kicking this for getting the yellow and she, you know, I'm figuring maybe she's going to go for that yellow. She's going to somewhat push her in a more deadly position. We fake the kick, but instead she's already going right. But we have not almost stopped moving this whole time, gang, this whole time. We've kept ourselves going, okay? From reload to not, spin, yellow, come around left to push her back right, fake the kick, throw a bottle. And from this bottle, you see her going for the story, but watch, watch what happens. She pulls back. Why is she pulling back, gang? I can give you a couple reasons. One, she's not familiar enough with clowns that use their yellows to recognize the distinction of a bottle in travel to know what a yellow is and what a pink is. Because a yellow bottle has a white smoke trail. 
A pink bottle has a pink smoke trail. For survivors that aren't as experienced and paying as much attention, they see a bottle going, coming right in front of them. They think it's going to be a pink. So she's trying to juke a yellow bottle because she thinks it's a pink here, gang. And what happens? Because of that, since she can't make it back to the pallet, now she has to go last second. We're sped up by our yellow. Because remember, we're sped up for our yellow. She has to play the tile. She has to play the tile. But that's the thing. We're, we're yellowed. We're throwing a pink. How's she going to play the tile, gang? She sees that. That's why. Notice how she doesn't go for the pallet. She doesn't want to get hit on the pallet. She decides instead to try to see if she can go for the other tile. Just take the hit. And we get the hit. But that's a funny thing. A funny thing, too, about this, uh, about this chase here, gang. Look at us from this yellow and we come around. Do you see this yellow that I throw here? You're going to notice I don't refresh. Look at this. If I would have gone, especially since we know that she, with how she was going, if I would have gone just a step or two backwards, like slightly to the right backwards, it would have been active for me to do that. I would have got the speed refresh, and I would have probably, as a result, been able to, with a pink, I would have not had to throw a yellow here. See how I'm throwing a yellow? I would have been a little bit closer. I would have probably been about right here, gang. I would have probably been right up in front of the doorway, and I could have thrown a pink instead of a yellow, and likely downed her very early into the entrance of this classroom. Okay, really, really important details to just keep in mind because, again, you know, I didn't play perfectly this chase, and there were things, like I said, little minor things that I could have done much, much better, and I would have downed her much farther from before she went down right here. And, you know, maybe it was good in hindsight that she, you know, did go down there simply because I pushed the teammates off of Jen, but, you know, that's, that's just the reality of having better proficiency with your bottle placement. You know, and like I said, high momentum. I want to replay this one again with the sound off because, again, you know, we don't stop moving here, gang. This is all what I talk about because we're. this is about keeping momentum. We keep moving. The closest we ever go to slowing down, got to reload. And this is your momentum will always, always slow down when you got to reload, gang. That's just the reality of when you move so slowly, when you don't have any bottles in play for you to affect the flow of the chase. You will always have slow momentum from reloading. You know, that you want to always try as a result to get better placements with your bottles, more efficiency, and not be reloading as often. You want to only ever be reloading when you have a survivor trapped at a tile. That's why the only time, you know, like I said, you'll ever see me reloading, you know, you look at this chase right here, is when you get to a situation like this. We get her at the pallet, she pre-drops, we reload right here because she can't go anywhere. If we reloaded earlier when we didn't have any bottles, she's not going to be right here, gang. She's going to be out this classroom. She's going to probably, if anything, pre-drop that god pallet by staircase. I'm not catching her, you know? I'm not catching her. I have to break chase. That's why we do what we do right here. We go forward. I'm going to go back. And there's one more example here for us, gang. We're going to be wrapping up this video soon. I know uh, this, this ended up being a lot longer than I thought, but I want to, like I said, when I do these, I want to make sure I'm extremely clear for you guys. Okay, gang? So one more clip for us. Alrighty, final clip. Ah, put the sound back on. Let's see. That's why I'm pushing a little bit inward as well. Because I don't know how far they have tried to get out. We want to see if we can push him a bit forward to one side. We know he's not going to go. We took a bit of a mind game here, thinking that he wasn't going to... Uh, play the pallet camp and he was going to run it, get the hit in off of that, throw the yellow cross up in case he tries to abandon the tile from here, get the pallet fake kick here, reload to push him back inward, cancel the reload, pick up the speed again for the refresh, and then we get him before he gets to the window. Alright, so, oh. <laughs> cancel. Don't mind that. So anyways, as y'all can really see, you know, from this, the, the speed of moment, the speed of how you act and everything. Let me get right from the beginning here. We're going to go right back from the beginning. We, we seldom ever really slow down here. And we actually, but we do at one point, right? And this is what I'm talking about. Remember what I said? You want to constantly keep going. And then sometimes you just stop. You interrupt the flow of the chase. The flow is already meant to be really high. You know, think of like really, really rushing wave. That's how you should be, how everything should be going when you're playing very, very efficiently. You're going to see that in the latter part of this chase even too. As an example, you'll, a demonstration of very, very high rush. You'll see that later part here. But we're going to slow down too because we're trying to just interrupt. We're trying to interrupt his, his conscious stream of thought. 
So we come in through here, we throw the yellow. Look at this, this is an important yellow. We come from the left with the yellow on the opposite side because we know he's looking to get out of this corner. He starts going this way until he sees us going this way too. And what do you see instead? He starts going to the right. So what do we do? He's on the right side. We start to kick. He's already on the right, stop, right side. We start to kick. We've got a yellow placed on the right. This is initially what he should be processing. He's thinking, okay, I can get this yellow. I can leave from this other side, go to main building. This is family estate. I can get out of this corner. But here's the thing, gang. We're not actually kicking. And rather than just go to the right immediately, he would recognize that and he would have started going to the left much early. But instead, by stopping, right? Let's look at this. I come in. I throw the yellow, I come to the left to push him to the right, he's still going to the right, I stop to do that. Now he realizes as I'm not kicking the pallet, he needs to go to the left. My yellow is active and he wasn't able to get the yellow, gang. He wasn't able to get the yellow. And now he's getting my pink. So where does he go from here? He's slowed down by my pink. He tries to go for the pallet. He probably thought I was going to lunge, is what he was thinking, gang. But I'm playing around stacks of coup de gras that I don't even have, for whatever reason. So when we don't lunge, and he doesn't dodge the lunge that we didn't make, he tries to go for the pallet. But now, we're able to hit him. We get the hit. He's going through the pink. He needs to act now, is what he's thinking. Because I'm recovering. He sees I'm not kicking the pallet. Recognize this, gang. When a survivor pre-drops a pallet and you don't kick that pallet, you completely mess with their mental. They are not going to be prepared for that. You play around a pallet without kicking it, you hit them. I have seldom ever, I'm going to say this, I have seldom ever seen a survivor play the exact same pallet after I hit them at that pallet unless they literally couldn't leave they are they are now trying to get away from here because they they don't know what to do they clearly got hit pre-dropping the pallet didn't work because you didn't kick the pallet so here's what happens bill's going he's slowed down but look gang one bottle in the chamber we swap to our yellow we throw the yellow i'm still moving gang i'm not stopping the closest we get to slowing down You'll see is when we reload, but we haven't even uh, considered that option yet. We go through our yellow. We're faking the kick. We're making him think we're getting our yellow. We're going to kick. He starts pulling, but we're not. We get the yellow. Why do I do this? I'm considered he's going to push backward to the other side of the map. I'm afraid that if I kick this pallet, even with the yellow, since I don't have any bottles, remember I don't have any bottles, I'm not going to be able to prevent him if he gets any further backward tile. So I come from the left while I'm still sped up. Just on the off chance he does want to consider that. I start reloading right here. But I notice he's really committing now inward. And I'm thinking to myself that since I have extra duration, that if I can just refresh my yellow, I won't need it. Because I just move so fucking fast, you know? And I'm able to down him because of that. And notice how I downed him without lunging in. That means that if I had coup de gras stacks that I wanted to preserve, I wouldn't need to worry about actually using them just to get this down here. So that's a big, big deal, gang, okay? And this is all, again, because I just kept my momentum high. I didn't stop moving. I placed my bottles with premeditated intent. I knew what I wanted to do with my bottles before I threw them. I wasn't throwing reflexively. I'm playing with a course of action in mind. Okay, gang? When I talk about course of action, this is a perfect example. Everything here is a premeditated string of multiple individual decisions in order to ensure that we hit this fucking bill. And I'll even, again, put the, the sound back on for this one to show you what I'm talking about. Listen to literally everything I'm saying here. I'm pushing a little bit inward as well. Because I don't know how far they have tried to get out. We want to see if we can push him a bit more to one side. We know he's not going to go. We took a bit of a mind game here, thinking that he wasn't going to uh, play the pallet camp, and he was going to run it, get the hit in off of that, throw the yellow cross up in case he tries to abandon the tile from here, get the pallet fake kick here, reload to push him back inward, cancel the reload, pick up the speed again for the refresh, and then we get him before he gets to the window. That's literally everything I'm talking about, gang, when I'm talking about momentum, I'm like, okay, we do this, and then when you see he does that, you gotta follow up with this, but I've got this set up in mind for this. That's literally it. 
You know, and as I mentioned earlier in some of my other previous clips, when I throw some of my yellows, I'm not throwing these yellows with a singular purpose in mind. It's not that I'm going to take this yellow to run in this one direction in order to make sure I can follow up with a pink and hit them in this one case. I'm taking it on the off chance that I can go multiple directions. I can pivot through it because that's what we did here in just even just this one example here, gang. Let me put the sound here. Like, look at this. So we hit the bill here. We're going over here, and look at this yellow placement. We throw the yellow literally right here. I can do multiple things with this yellow. I can take this yellow to come to the right. I can take this yellow to come to the left. I first come from the left, which pushes him back to the right, and so now I take the yellow to come from the right. I pivot through it. I refresh the duration, and I'm doing this constantly without slowing down my movement. That, again, is the essence of high momentum. It's everything that I'm talking about. And, you know, it's not like... It's not like my bottles were perfectly where they needed to be in a lot of these cases. Sometimes I, you know, like I said, you need to improvise, right? You go back, you go back over here. You know, I did, I did make a mistake here. I played off of it through a pink, uh, came around like that. Like, you do need to know really when to improvise. I mean, hey, going back to the very, very beginning, you know, this is, this is a great example of improvisation. When it's like one of the first ever clips of really, really high momentum I ever did on Clown. We came over here, throw this yellow, misplaced, to my understanding. Until we hit him, realize we can play it, especially since we see, you know, like I said, we hear the pallet drop. You know what I mean, gang? So that's that's literally why I put um, I want to put a lot of emphasis on this, um, and why it's going to be important overall when it comes to learning and getting better at clown. But we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here, gang. We have talked about this a lot. I think I've really covered just about everything. We've gone over eight different examples. In this one hour video, I've, I've done everything I can step by step, piece by piece to break it down. Hopefully, if you look at both the graph, listen to my summarizations on how momentum really like in, uh, is, is just really incorporated into clown gameplay and getting better at clown. Hopefully a lot of these will make sense. You know, like I said, you know, clown clowns uh, momentum is the glass ceiling, you know, momentum is not just about knowing what to do it's about knowing how to do it faster it's the speed of your execution it's the understanding of how to do things quicker and having a better perception of how it is survivors are going to be acting in tow you know it's it's very difficult to do very early your momentum as a more inexperienced clown is going to be lower and that's why you may find the execution of you know some strategies more difficult you know it's one of the things i've heard people some people say they can't do the same things i do they're doing the exact same methods i'm doing but it's not working out for them because their momentum is not as high again they aren't doing things as fast and with proper movement or understanding at the same level and that's fine that's fine it's something though like i said though got to improve over time but there you go gang i hope all of this is uh helpful i don't want to you know belabor the same points multiple times i feel like i've rehearsed and recover uh covered everything for you guys um and that'll be it for this uh, guide update y'all take care y'all have a nice day